does your fire crack his bottle? Uh, my father, he will get me some when he's finished out of the barber shop. Well, you may have a long wait the way that barber's cutting hair in there. Barber, tell me something. You and Jenny Holcomb went steady for five years. That's right. Now, how come all of a sudden you decided you didn't want to be friends no more? What, what the devil are you talking about, Sam? You hear that, Rodriguez? He, he wants to know what the devil I'm talking well, about. Well, what are you talking about? Everybody knows Jenny and me is getting married next week. That's exactly what I am talking about. My wife and me, we got along real amiable life until we got married. <laughs> and then, my, oh, my. I tell you, Barbie, you just ain't got good sense. <laughs> Now, you laugh. You laugh while you can. Because after next week, your laughing days is over, boy. <laughs> well, I've seen an awful lot of laughing, but not much cutting. Frank, how can you take so much time cutting so little hair? Now, don't you worry, little <laughs> Joe. Your day's coming a little later. Oh, well, this hair, are you kidding? Yes, I am. Hey, hey you kids! Ah! All right, you kids! <laughs> hey, Paco. Good luck, got some firecrackers. That ought to hold your pop gets out. Thank you, Joe. Right. Back to you, ma'am. Ah, she's a real pretty gal, ain't she, Duke? Guess that don't do Duke no good. She didn't even give him a tumble. Wait a minute, honey. I want to talk to you. What are you afraid of? All I want to do is talk to you and get acquainted. Just let me alone! Wedding, ain't you, Sheriff? Yeah, this old goat here don't talk you out of getting married. <laughs> <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> you? Hey, uh, you're, you're not gonna let him charge you full price for that, are you, Roy? Will you stop? <laughs> <laughs> get in here. Get in here. Hey, come on, don't, don't cut too much off, will you? Now, think? now, you ain't gonna tell me how to cut your hair, are you, little Joe? Well, I just want to make sure my hat still fits, you know? Uh, be a little weight, boys. Uh, two ahead of you. Yeah, we got lots of time. Uh, just find yourself a chair someplace there. Don't, don't get carried away with the scissors, Frank. You and that chair. Just hold your head, Will. Would you mind letting me take your place? <laughs> you got to be kidding. I waited for two hours to get in this chair. <laughs> You're willing to wait that long. You ought to be willing to wait a little while longer. Uh, like I told you, there's two ahead of yeah, you. Yeah, I know, but uh, I'm in a hurry. How about it? Well, you're going to wait your turn just like everybody else. <laughs> Go ahead, Frank. Yeah, but I'm not like anybody else. Well, that's good. This makes the difference. I better get out of the chair, mister. No sense getting killed over a little thing like a haircut. Duke here is so uh, touchy about the way he looks. You don't get out of that chair, you'll never have need of a haircut. Here, listen to me, mister. Like I told you, he's touchy. I've seen too many mean local killers in my life not to recognize one when I see him. You shut up, old man. Better get out of that chair, little Joe, before he kills you. Now, you are getting out of that little chair, aren't you? Oh, yeah. But I'm gonna remember you, mister. Why don't you sit over here, mister? Hey, Carlos. I'll need a shave. I would also like a shave. Por favor. What do you think you're doing? Carlos, get out of the chair. No, Joe. I know what he wants. But it is not right. If you want to shave, you will have to wait until after I get mine. It's 
Somebody tell him to get out of that chair before I kill him. Come on, Carlos. This is no time to be a hero. Get out of the chair. No, Joe. It's all right. He will wait. No man would kill for such a foolish reason. Por favor, Barber. Get busy with that ladder. Carlos, don't be a fool. I'm mighty particular about my hair. I don't want you to take too much off the top. Trim it nice and neat in the back and keep the sideburns long. side of them? Not a thing. Joe, why don't you come inside? Have some supper with Paco and me. Paco's in there? Yeah. He has no relatives this side of Mexico. Roy Coffey wrote to his grandparents until he hears back. I, I told him I'd take care of the boy. Well, how's he feeling? How do you think he feels? Poor kid, every time I think about what happened in there, right, Joe. Nothing you could do. It wasn't your fault. You're not responsible for Mr. Rodriguez's death. I know it wasn't my fault, Pa, but I just wish there was something I could have done. What could you have done? Sam Sneddon and Barbara told me what happened and how. Joe, sometimes situations arise and there's nothing you can do about them. Yeah, well, there's something I can do about it now. I can find Miller. I'm gonna saddle a fresh horse. Now we caught a couple of them. Frank Walter and Barn. Roy's got them in jail in Virginia City. Did you get the one that did the killing? Well, we don't know. According to them, they didn't have anything to do with it. I have to go into town, Pa. You'll be careful now. Right. Tell me if one of these fellows is a killer, will you? Yeah, that's the one. Paco, how you feeling? Joe? About my father. I know there's nothing you could have done. 
Thanks, Paco. Howdy, Ben. Roy. Joe. Hey, Paco, got a letter for you. Oh, you heard from his grandparents then? Yeah. Good. I'm glad you were able to get in touch with him. And so was I. Well, trial all set? Yeah, but it's been changed over to Carson City. How come? Well, Duke Miller's lawyer claimed that he couldn't get an unbiased jury in Virginia City, so he pulled some legal strings and had the whole trial transferred over to Carson. Oh. Hey, Paco, let us meet Grandpa. Just come in this forenoon. Thank you, Senor Sheriff. He must have got himself a pretty smart lawyer. They just don't come no smarter. Wilson Reed's defendant. Oh. And Ben. Now, both Barbara and Sam are eyewitnesses to this murder. And their testimony should convict Miller. But I just don't want to take any chance on having any trouble to trial. So you get Joe to stay away from the trial, huh? Now, Roy, Joe isn't going to start any trouble in a court of law. Roy, I'm going to that trial whether you like it or not. Senor Cartwright? Yes, Paco. My grandfather, he wants me to go to Juarez. To live with him and Grandma. Well, that's good news, Paco. You'll be real happy with living with your grandparents, won't you? We'll make arrangements to get you there as soon as possible. Senor Cartwright, I will stay here until they hang the man who killed my father. Boys, about that time, let's go in. Thank you, Deputy. Well, boys, this is your big day. How do you feel? Uh, half felt better, Mr. Reed. Have they caught Odie yet? No. It's a good thing for you that they haven't. Otherwise, you'd hang. You think he can get us off? There's a possibility. If there weren't, I wouldn't be defending you. Let's go. Oh, Mr. Reed. Uh, hmm? I ain't had a haircut in a long time, and I thought maybe... Uh, I hate to go into court looking so shabby. So if it's possible, I'd like to get a barber in here to sort of clean me up. Well, there's, uh, there's only one way that you'd ever get a barber in here. That's if the jury convicted you. They always grant a last request to a condemned man. And that would be your last request, wouldn't it, Duke? <laughs> Come on, boys. It's not smart to keep a judge waiting. And then when Mr. Rodriguez refused to get out of the chair, Duke Miller shot him. Shot him and killed him. And then while, while Rodriguez was lying dead on the floor, Duke Miller got into the chair. And then very calmly made Frank finish cutting his hair. You have heard the barber, Mr. Snedden, and now Mr. Cartwright tell how Carlos Rodriguez met his death. Never have I heard of such a cold-blooded killing. And never have I been able to offer such overwhelming evidence against a murderer. Your Honor, it isn't up to Mr. Albright to decide whether Duke Miller is a murderer. That's up to the jury. Until a decision is reached, I insist that Mr. Albright refrain from referring to Mr. Miller or one of the defendants as a murderer. You see that you do that, Mr. Albright. I'm sorry, Judge. Your witness. Mr. Cartwright, I, um, I understand that you were unconscious at the time of the killing. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, but I, I came to immediately and... That's all. No more questions. He had the gun in his oh. hand. Your Honor. That's all, son. You can step down. Miller maintains that he never stepped foot inside that barbershop. But you have heard three men swear that Miller did come into that barbershop and that he murdered Carlos Rodriguez in cold blood right before their eyes. Gentlemen, there is no need for me to say more. If ever a man was guilty of murder and deserved to be hung, that man is Duke Miller. Now, I know you're going to find him guilty. 
And I know that he is going to hang. The state rests, Your Honor. All right. Well, Mr. Reed. Thank you, Your Honor. Gentlemen, you have heard the two defendants state that Joseph Cartwright tried to strangle Duke Miller in his cell in Virginia City. Now, I don't know why Joseph Cartwright wanted to kill Mr. Miller, but I do know that he hates him. So do you. Therefore, I want you to completely disregard his testimony, because the testimony of a man full of hate is very unreliable. I object, Your Honor. I'll sustain that. Mr. Reed, I will instruct the jury what to disregard. I'm sorry. Your Honor, I would like for the barber and Mr. Snedden to come up here and take another look at Mr. Brennan and Mr. Miller. Objection, Your Honor. Just a minute. Now, uh, they've had plenty of time to see them, Mr. Reed. This isn't necessary for them to come back up here. And... Your Honor, I insist that they come up here and positively identify the defendants as two of the men who were in that barber shop, and I will prove them wrong. Now, there is no doubt that someone killed Carlos Rodriguez. But there is grave doubt, and I am certain that it was not Duke Miller. All right, Mr. Snedden, Mr. Thomas, come on up. Come on, come on. Come on, right up here. Now, gentlemen, if you'll stand right here in front of the defendants, and don't take your eyes off them. Uh, Mr. Reed, you're sure now that you're not taking up this court's time for nothing? Please bear with me, Your Honor. All right. Now, Mr. Brennan and Mr. Miller admit that they rode through Virginia City the day of the murder. They swore they did not go into the barber shop. They swore that they were not in the company of a third man. Now, maybe three men did enter that barber shop. I don't know. But Cal Brennan was not one of them, nor was Duke Miller. Mr. Uh, Snedden, why do you wear glasses? What do you think I wear them for? <laughs> because you have very poor eyesight. Well, I got good enough eyesight to know that these were the two that came into the barber shop that day. And that's the one that killed Carlos Rodriguez. And you can't disprove that. You bet you can't. We know who we saw. Then you still insist, you are still positive, that those are the two men that went into the barbershop? Yes. And could you identify the third man you claim went into the barbershop if you ever saw him again? I'm sure I could. So could I. Now, gentlemen, the prosecutor bases his entire case on an old man who has very poor eyesight and a barber who admits that he was terrified at the time the crime was committed. Now, I don't think that's sufficient evidence to hang a man. But I can see from the looks of your faces that you do. You still believe these witnesses. All right. I want you to go on believing them. I mean that. I want you to believe them. Because I'm going to base my entire defense on the fact that you do believe them. Even though I know and am certain of a fact that they are mistaken. Floyd! <coughs> Mr. Snedden, do you recognize that man? That's the one. That's the other one that came into the barbershop with them. That's him, all right. And you both positively identify him as the man who came into the barber shop on February the 2nd with Calvin Brennan and Duke Miller. I'm positive he's the one. There ain't no doubt about it. That's all, gentlemen. You may go back to your seats. Your Honor, the man the two witnesses just identified is Floyd Brennan, Calvin Brennan's brother. Take off his hat. Calvin isn't very proud of his brother Floyd because he's a criminal. As soon as he is through here, the two deputies will escort him back to his jail cell in Kingman, 
where he's been incarcerated for more than a year. Now, I object, Your Honor. What kind of a trial? All right, all right, Mr. Quiet. Quiet, please. Quiet. Quiet. Quiet, please. All right, Mr. Reed, go ahead. Thank you. Gentlemen, they said they were positive. Positive that this man was in the barbershop. But on that fatal day, Floyd Brennan was locked up in jail more than 500 miles away from Virginia City. So how in God's name can you believe anything those witnesses have said? You can't, gentlemen. You can't. Floyd Brennan was not in that barbershop. Cal Brennan was not in that barbershop. Duke Miller was not in that barbershop. So, gentlemen, you can't. You can't possibly bring in a verdict of guilty unless you are willing to make a mockery of the word justice. Quiet. What? Quiet, please! <clears throat> you gentlemen reached the verdict? We have, Your Honor. The defendants, please stand up. How do you find? We find both the defendants not guilty. <laughs> not guilty. Joseph! Joseph! Not guilty, Your Honor. How much proof do you need? There were three eyewitnesses that uh, saw just, Miller just, kill Mr. Uh, Rodriguez. Just a minute. Now, the jury has handed down a decision. It stands. What kind of a decision? What proof do you need? Now, that is enough. Oh, no, it's not enough. Joseph! Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! Joseph! Stop that! Quiet, please! Did you hear me? Stop it! Young man, that is going to cost you 30 days in jail. Well, really, I could probably get that sentence cut considerably, Judge, if I could afford Mr. Reed for an I attorney. said be quiet. Your Honor. My son has been under great strain for the past couple of weeks. I beg the court's indulgence. All right. All right, Mr. Conrad. But let me tell you this. Let me tell all of you this. Duke Miller was tried in a proper court of law, and he was declared innocent. Now, if anyone decides to reverse that decision by putting a bullet into Duke Miller, the killer will be tried in my courtroom. And I promise you, he will be hanged by the neck until dead. This court stands adjourned. Nothing like it in my life, in my whole life. What we saw, we saw Miller kill Paco's father right in front of our eyes. And, and, and just because that jury Roy, happened to be... A... Roy, what are we going to do about it? Are we just going to stand around and do nothing while them murders in there go free, are we? You know what we ought to do? We ought to go in there, pull him out of jail, and hang him up ourselves. That's, That's the first sensible thing I've heard all day. Now, wait a minute, boys. We come over here to Carson City to attend a trial. Now, that trial's over. But just because a smart lawyer happened... Now, look, he was tried according to law. The jury brought in a verdict of not guilty. Now, no matter how any of us feel, there's not going to be any hanging, legally or illegally... Joseph, what happened in there is final. You heard what the judge said. There'll be no more trouble. So let's get on home. How's Paco feeling? I thought I could use a glass of milk. Yeah, I'll bring it up to him. With a gun in your hand? I 
try to talk to him. All he wants to do is kill Duke Miller personally. Yeah, well, don't you worry about him killing Duke Miller, Bob. Because I'm going to do it for him. Evidently, all I've taught you means nothing. That boy upstairs needs help. He's being eaten away by hate. He won't listen to me. But he likes you, Joseph. So you talk to him. He admires you. You advise him. Tell him that the sacred book lies. Tell him that vengeance belongs to Joe Cartwright and Paco Rodriguez. Tell him that the courts are to be obeyed only when they decide in our favor. Tell him there's no such thing as human dignity or decency. You tell him that men have the God-given right to turn themselves into jungle animals. Go ahead. Tell him that. Isn't that what you believe? Your little milk. I don't want any. Come on, do you some good. Take a little bit anyway. Do you mind if we do a little talking? I don't mind. My family and I have been talking downstairs, and uh, we think it might be a good idea if you went to your grandparents right away. My grandparents will not see Paco until my father's death has been avenged. You're going to kill the man who took my father's life, and I'm going to help you. You meant it, didn't you? Yes, I meant it when I said it, Paco. Let me try to explain something to you. When a fellow grows up like I have, he, he sometimes says things when he's angry. He forgets some of the truths that he learned when he was a boy. What truth? Well, wh wh where does a man go when he dies, Paco? A good man. To heaven. And where does a bad man go when he dies? To hell. Yes, that's where he goes. Because nobody goes unpunished, Paco. The man who killed my father, he must be punished now. The court said he's innocent, even though we know he's guilty. Now, that's because the courts are not perfect, Paco. But God is. Yes, but... You believe in God, don't you? Yes. All right, then you must believe that God will punish Duke Miller. Look, I know it's hard. It's hard for you and it's hard for me. But, son, if you believe in God, then you must believe that. You want me to go to my grandparents in Juarez? And leave vengeance to God? Yes, that's what I want. I don't want to, but... If you go with me, little Joe, I'm ready. Well, look, I, uh, I got a lot of things to do around here, maybe. Maybe Horse or Adam could take you. What things? If you believe that we must leave vengeance to God, what things have you got to do? Tomorrow. 
Well, it just about makes a load, don't it? Yep. Hey, Hoss, finish tying this stuff on for me. All right. Yeah, Pa. Just want you to know that I appreciate you volunteering to take the pocket of his pants. Well, I didn't exactly volunteer to take him, but... <laughs> well, but I do want your word that you're going straight to Juarez. Nowhere else. I couldn't very well go chasing after Miller in a wagon load of supplies. No. But I also want your word that you're not going to go after Miller afterwards, either. And if you happen to bump into him, no guns. All right, you have my word. You really mean that? He asked me to talk to Paco last night, talk things out with him. Mm -hmm. What you were really asking me to do was talk things out with myself, wasn't it? I guess I better get Paco and tell him time to go. Adiós, padre. Adiós, señor Cartwright. for your grandfather. Maybe someday we'll come down to Mexico and visit with you, huh? You tell your grandpa we'll write him about the ranch, huh? Thank you, sir, your share. Joe, you take care of things. And a Paco. Don't worry, I'll take care of him, Paco. Trying to prove. Oh, it's a nice town. Who knows? You might see that Cartwright kid again. Ain't worth it, Duke. You ain't forgot how you killed that Mexican. You're pressing your luck. Hey, fellas! Why don't you go in and say hello to the sheriff? I like to have this table. Do you mind? Well, there's plenty of tables. Can't you see? Yeah, I know, but I like to have this one. Look, I said this. But... Hello, Sam. Sam, you remember me, don't you? You got a lot of gold showing your face in this town. Damn. Let bygones be bygones. You sure you ain't mad at you? Trying to get me hung? 
I'm gonna pay for your dinner. How's that? I ain't gonna eat with the likes of you. And I ain't sitting with the likes of you. Sit down, old man. Please. How's your front cart right? Still pushy as ever? You'd find out soon enough if he knew you was in town. Well, that's exactly what I want him to know. You know where to find him? I know where to find him. Will you tell him I'm here? Yes. I'll tell him you're here. And I'll tell the sheriff, too. You skunks are back in town. This place is too fancy for me. I'm going next door and have a drink. Oh, look who's here. Hello, can I talk to you now? Just let me alone, will you? What's the matter with you? Why are you being so standoffish? I'm not such a alone. bad guy. <laughs> uh, you look kind of shaggy, Duke. Maybe better clean up and uh, give it another try, huh? Maybe you're right. Come on. Hey, where you going? Lover boy wants a haircut. What else? <laughs> now that, that's that's what Sam told me. Father, I wouldn't believe. I'll be right with. You. Need a haircut. Uh, we're closed up. I said I need a haircut. I I, I told you we're closed up. You're open now. What's the matter, Barber? Ain't you glad to see me? Come on, he's not gonna hurt you. Come on. <sighs> Want the same kind of haircut you gave me the last time? Sure, sure, Mr. Miller. You know, the last time I was here, I left in such a hurry, I forgot to pay you. So this time, I'm gonna pay you double. How's that? Uh, fine, fine, Mr. Miller, that's... Miller's back in town, and them two fellers is with him. They're over in the barbershop. I couldn't find a sheriff. Let's go get him. I'll take his rifle. Leave it alone, Sam. We don't want anything to do with him. What in tarnation's wrong with you? You said after a trial you was going to get him. Yeah, well, I changed my mind. Little Joe, what you going to do anything about it? Remember the talk we had last night, Paco? You remember what we talked about? Well, I meant what I said. Paco, I believe what I said. I'm going to go in the bank and cash that draft. I want you to sit here in the wagon and wait for me, just like I told you. I never thought I'd live to see the day when a Cartwright would turn coward. Little Joe's no coward. He said God will punish this man. In due time, Paco, in due time. But I still say little Joe's a coward. And so would your father if, if he hadn't been killed by them three skunks down there in that barber shop. Right. 
Buck, are you all right? Yeah. I had to come. My father wasn't a coward. I can't be either. I understand. All right, Duke. Nobody's hurt. Let the kid go. Get out, kid. Not you, Cartwright. You stay. Go on back to the wagon. What are you going to do? Just go on back to the wagon. Put your guns away, fellas. I want this nice and legal. I want him bruised up so he'll never forget us. Frank, you did a beautiful job. Yeah, I figure that's one of the best jobs I've ever done. Let me out of this chair! We're gonna let you out of the chair. Don't you go out without your tie. Because we'd like you to see the job we did. Don't let anybody see me like this, please. Please don't let anybody see me like this. Everybody's gonna see you! No! Come on, let him see you, Duke! Go ahead, let him see you! Enough. That's enough. Such a cry. You 
Get it all out, Bucko. I don't. You've done all you can do. Why don't we go home? Go home. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Leaf. I'm going to call that ten dollars. Here's your ten. And ten more. His luck can't go on forever. I wish you fellas had stopped fussing that way. After all, I didn't want to play this dang game in the first place. There's, uh, your ten. And, uh, there's another ten. Well, I got your new saddle and my carbine, so let's go. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute, Adam. Let me, let me play this hand up. That's twenty dollars to me, right? All right, I ain't, I ain't got but ten, so I'm... I'm ten in the pot. I'm gonna call that ten. You mean you've lost all that $400 my brother paid you for that horse? Look, I feel bad enough as it is now. Just be quiet, will you? Let's see your card, Frank. Ain't it a caution how them cards just fell together? I never did see such a town. I lost my poke, I lost my horse, I lost the money I got for the horse. I'm getting out of here while I still got boots to walk in. Goodbye, fella. Well, Leif, looks like you won yourself a little pile of money there. How much did you lose, big brother? Oh, uh, he only lost exactly $160. $160? Boy, you need a keeper. Dad burn it, Adam, I felt lucky. Well, the next time you feel lucky, let me know, will you? I'll see if I can't lock you up somewhere. Well, let's get this horse back to the ranch. Wait a minute, Adam. You can't take that horse away from here. What are you talking about? You gave him the $400 for the horse, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. And the horse trader lost the $400 to me. Well, that's his bad luck. Oh, well, the horse had a little bad luck, too. He lost $160. Why don't you sue him for it? Oh, I wouldn't sue him. I'd just, uh, sell a horse. You a what? Adam, look. After I borrowed that first hundred, Lave here made me put the horse up for security on the rest of it. Security? Yeah. <laughs> security. <laughs> yeah. Security. You know, if you weren't so big, I'd just poke you one right in the mouth. Well, we'll get you your 160 somehow. Yeah. And make it soon, or I'll sell him. I got enough hay burners around here already. Leave. How come you're so ugly? <laughs> it's the business I'm in. These critters standing around, eating and drinking and making me do all the work. I just hate them. Like you hate poker. Yeah. I'm just plain mean. <laughs> yeah, you sure are. <laughs> Maybe we get that money off Paul, huh? For a thoroughbred racehorse? 
You know how he feels about horses that can't earn their keep. Yeah, but what if we explained to him about the sweepstakes in Virginia City at the end of the month and the winner taking $1,500? Yeah, but you got to win to get it. Adam, we'd have the only thoroughbred racehorse in the whole race. Well, we may have the only thoroughbred horse in the race that's going to lose. Now, of all the fool things, you sure take the prize. Dad, give me that, Adam. We... We'll get it somehow. If I'd have known what you were doing, I never would have spent the rest of the money on your saddle and my rifle. Oh, let me see your new rifle. Somebody's got himself a brand new saddle. Yeah, Paul got it down to Lone Star Leather. Oh, don't tell me Lev Davis made this. Handmade all the way through. Yeah, that's mail came in for you, too. Okay. What a beauty. Joseph, will you take your feet off the set, Pete? Yes, sir. I saw this rifle down at Spence Pullins. Sure wish I could afford one like it. Well, if you saved your money, you could. Yeah, you ain't got none of that stuff stashed out somewhere, have you, little brother? Who, me? Heck no. Couldn't hang on to a dollar if it was tied, Joe. Give me that thing before you wear it out. That's right. You know, Joe, you need to develop some better habits with your money than that. Yes, and you're just the one to teach him, aren't you? Now, listen to this. Joseph, how many times do I have to tell you? It's from uh, Enos Mumford. So, Ben, if you could spare one of your boys for a few weeks to lend me a hand with the stock, I'd be obliged. As some of the stock has been ridden and gentle, I figure about... Twelve dollars a head. Should be a fair price to finish the job. Your good friend in this milking. Twelve dollars a head, huh? Mm-hmm. How many has he got left? Well, he's got uh, 18 horses. Twelve dollars a head. That 18 be... Two hundred and sixteen dollars. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's almost a hundred... That's better than a hundred dollars a week. Figuring two weeks to bust them. Yeah. I'll go. Wait a minute. At $100 a week, we can both go. I'm pretty near finished that fence anyhow, Paul. Now, hold on a minute now. I, I can't spare everybody. Only one of you can go. Well, it doesn't make a difference as long as one of us goes. Yeah, that's, that's all right. You go, Adam. Well, wait a minute. You two aren't the only ones around here who can sit a Brock. He's right. He should have a chance to go, too. All right, we'll do it the fair way. We'll, we'll draw for it. Let's go. <clears throat> now, the one who picks... The short match will not go. The one who picks the long one will. Well, two to one odds isn't too bad. So we have two short ones and one long one. Adam? You go first, little brother. You're older than I am. You go first. All right, let's see. Hmm. It just isn't our day, is it? Dad, come in a wall of cons. Oh, come on, Hoss. <laughs> oh, youth must be served. It's a shame to send a boy to do a man's job. Oh, I think maybe this boy could manage it. Huh? Yeah, but Paul, all that money in here, just throw it away like he always does. Well, I agree that his money habits aren't all that they should be. Yeah, well, don't you worry, Pa. Don't you worry about that, huh? -uh. Oh, indeedy. Now, after seeing this new rifle Adams, I'm going to develop some new money-saving habits. He... Would you mind? Well, I'm glad you're picking up some of your older brother's better habits. like to hear from Ben one way or the other. Yeah, I heard a lot about them Cartwrights. Sure must be something. Folks say they know more about ranching than anybody in the territory. I wouldn't say that. No, I guess I did teach Ben Cartwright all he knows about ranching. Couldn't help but some of it rub off on his sons. Go, mm -hmm. Tobe. You learn that $12 a head breaking these Bronx. Yeah, he sure will. What do you mean by that? Well, Cora says that uh, you got tossed off of most of them before you hurt your back. 
Now, see here, Sam Finney. I wouldn't be repeating that around, you hear? Now, get down off that fence and help me saddle up one of them blasted Bronx. I'm not waiting for the Cartwrights. The chorus says you should stay away from them Bronx. Chorus says women should stick to their pies and cooking and leave men's work to a man. Now, Pete, bring them in. <laughs> Still think you ought to wait for one of them Cartwrights. Man of your age. Man my age? Why, you old coot, I'm 20 years younger than you. Well, that still puts you past the middling years. Well, shut up and hold that bronc. <laughs> what are you up to? Oh, I do believe, Enos Mumford, you must be in your second childhood. You'll be small comfort to me if you break your neck. Will you stop that screeching and yelling? I'm having enough trouble with this bronc without you. <laughs> Get him loose. Enos, Enos, are you all right? Enos. See what you've done. What is it? You oh. broke my watch. Of all the hard-headed, uh, stubbornest husbands the good Lord ever gave to a woman, you... Now, you get up and get out of this corral, Enos Milford. I'll never be able to ride him with you in this corral now. Uh... Man, sakes! Little Joe! Howdy, Mrs. Milford. Oh, we didn't see you coming. My, how you've grown. Come on, uh, leave, leave, leave me be. Didn't, didn't know when you'd get here. How are you? So I just thought I'd take the top off that there jughead. Good to see you. He must have stepped in the hole. Enos. Uh, uh, oh, uh, I'd like you to meet a neighbor friend of mine, uh, Sam Finney. Sam, how are you? Hi, hey, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, just call me Joe. Oh, just seeing you again, little Joe, makes me realize how time flies. It's been a long time. Must be about two years, Mrs. Milford. How's the ranch going? Oh, not so good. With taxes and the price of feed up and me being retired. You see what I have to put up with? Ever since he's retired, he's been like an old rain steer. <laughs> Cora, you just handle the house chores and cooking, and I'll handle the business matters in my own way. Uh, oh, uh, speaking of cooking, I'll bet little Joe would like a slice of your famous apple pie you were baking. Sounds pie. good. Yeah. Pie? Yeah. Oh! Oh, Enos, I guess none of us is perfect. Now, oh. oh, there, little Joe. That little bay there, uh, she's still rough, but I sat her till she started banging me up against the corral fence and I had to get off. Yeah, well? Well, what? Well, then she's never been rode. Oh, I sure enough had her whipped until she started bumping my leg against the corral fence. Hmm. Yeah, what about the others? Oh, that uh, Sorrel and Black. Oh, they gave me plenty of trouble. Well, what about the Sorrel and Black? Well, the, the Sorrel broke my cinch uh, when I nearly had him until uh, me and him parted company. Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> what about the Black? Uh, uh, well, the... Uh, well, the truth is, uh, I lost the stirrup. And you know as well as I, little Joe, that a bucking horse will generally pile you good if that happens. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Mr. Milford, I thought I was stealing when my pa told me you'd pay me $12 a head to, to break that stock of yours, including the ones that you'd claimed you gentled yourself. But the fact of the matter is, I don't know how many horses out there have thrown you. But you said you could handle the rough ones. That's all I can. I can, but you know, and I know, that any horse out there that's tossed you is going to be tougher to stick on the next time. And I got to stick on those horses till they're broke or they throw me 50 times or more. So? So? So I'll ride all the stock. And I'll charge you $15 a head for the ones you rode and $12 for the others. Now, uh, see here, little Joe Cartwright. You're not squeezing me for more money. 
Talk like that sounds like your pa put you up to it. My pa did not put me up to this. Mm. I put me up to this. Yeah. And if you don't like the deal, well, get yourself another rider. Well? How about thirteen fifty? How about fifteen dollars? You're pretty shrewd for a young man. Yeah, that's a habit I've been developing lately. All right, little Joe. It's a deal. Mr. Milford, that's a wise choice. <laughs> Fellas, hope you didn't come in here to play that dang game again. <clears throat> no, we didn't come in to play the dang game. We come in to get our dang horse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I was coming out there to see you about that. Hey, ain't nothing happened to him, has it, Leif? Oh, no, nothing. Nothing except he eats more than any critter I ever had in here. <laughs> it's caution how that critter eats. And then, uh, and then with no exercise, he, he starts kicking down the stall. Well, then we'll just have to take him off your hands, get him back to our place. Oh, well, uh, you got the, uh, 160? Well, not exactly, but... And no buts. No money. No horse. Well, now, come on, Leif. Dad, come it. You know me and Adam. You know you'll get your money. Uh, well, uh, where is it, then? Uh, we've overextended ourselves lately, and we're a little short. Well, your pa's got lots of it. Well, why don't you get it from him? Well, you see, every family has its quirks, and... Under the circumstances, going to our pa is one of them. Oh. Well, how about little Joe? Everybody knows how he throws his money around. Uh, by the way, I ain't seen little Joe lately. Where's he been? Ah, uh, he's been working. A couple of weeks now. Yeah, come on, Adam. We'll see you later. I'll give you just two days to get that critter out of here. Hmm. Why you ever want a hay burner like that, I'll never know. He's doing that. Yeah, but can he move? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm hurting a little bit, but the money kind of soothes all that. Well, with all that hurting, you must be doing a pretty good job. If you're hurting too bad, I'll be happy to take over for you. Oh, well, that's terribly generous of you, but I think I can handle it. What's it all about? You two certainly didn't come over here just to visit. Why, Why else would we, little brother? Well, because it's a long ride from the Ponderosa, and we grew up together, remember? You know, I think our younger brother is losing a little respect for his elders since he began uh, making all that money. You're right, Adam. He's getting plumb smart alecky. Oh, boy. Talk like that sounds like you're about a foot away from cattle rustling. 
How would you like to own a real racehorse? Long-legged Kentucky thoroughbred. You see, we got a chance to buy, I should say, steal from this dead broke horse trader, the swiftest looking animal you ever laid eyes on. Now, I may have a couple of faults, but when it comes to judging horse flesh, there ain't nobody else in this territory that's better than me. This horse is a winner. How much you want to borrow? You know, little Joe seems to be developing a certain kind of hardness, don't he? We need 160. How come you didn't borrow it from Paul? You know how he is about riding stock that you can't work cattle with. Look, Joe, we just want to buy this horse for the one race there in Virginia City. And we're going to sell him right after he wins. Oh, no, you can't lose. This horse can fly. We'll split the 1,500 three ways, you, Hoss, and me. What do I get for security? Security. Security? Security? You want $160? You can't yeah. lose. Oh, come on, Adam. Look, I know you're a good judge of horse flesh. But you're talking about winning a race that hasn't been run yet. Now, there is a possibility. Well, let me upset you. I know it is a remote possibility, but there is a possibility he could lose. Hey, Joe, look. Why don't you do me and old Adam a real big favor and... And loan us that money. Security. You loan a third of the horse. Security. Joe, you can't lose. Uh oh. Security. Ah, security, security, security. You keep talking about security. Now, what do you consider security? Well, what are you yelling at? You want me to spend $160 for that horse? I don't need the horse. Go ahead. Hey, well, look, look at it from my point of view now. You want me to buy a third interest in a horse I've never seen? You want me to buy a pig and a poke without any, any kind of security, eh? All right. What do you consider security? Oh, little things. Your new saddle. And that, uh, that new rifle Adam just bought. You are a thief. Steal from his own kin. Give up on the whole thing. Wait, wait, wait. Now, I know that we are only half brothers, but we are brothers. Agreed? Well, I always thought so till now. All right. young brother here wants security for $160 so let's give it to him if the horse wins you get one third of the $1,500 prize money if he loses we give you our share of the horse to sell as you so please is it a deal? Hmm. Is that horse as fast as he says it is? Like Adam said, he ain't no fool when it comes to judging livestock, Joe. Well, that saddle of yours wouldn't have done me much good anyway. Size of that thing. But boy, you know that rifle of Adam's. That's a nice one. So if the horse loses, I want the horse and the rifle. was nice of Pa and Adam to, to talk to me about using my head about money. Yeah, you're you're getting good at it, too, Joe. I'll go inside and see if I can get that advance. Excuse me, Adam. Security. 
Well, what brings you boys over here? You get lonesome for little Joseph? <laughs> uh, we were. We just got over it. No, we came over to talk about some business. Yep. I'm afraid it wasn't the smartest thing we ever did, neither. Well, now, what kind of business you boys in? We bought ourselves a racehorse. A racehorse? A racehorse? Yes, sir. A real honest to gosh thoroughbred. We're going to enter him in that Virginia City race next week. That a fact. Mm -hmm. Enos, get that look out of your eye. Now, what's wrong, Mrs. Milford? Enos once bought himself a racehorse. Almost lost his shirt on it, too. He the one, Cora, if he hadn't have fallen and broke a leg. Nevertheless, I don't hold with racing or betting. And I'm surprised your pa let you boys get mixed up in it. Well, actually, he hasn't had a chance to say anything about it yet. Well, now, that's what comes of men living without a woman around. I tell you, whenever a man Cora, tries to go stop alone... that cackling and set out some pie for the boys. They've been looking forward to it. Well, goodness, if I'd only known they were coming, I'd just put the pies in the oven. They're not done yet. Cora, you're giving me a reputation as a liar. I keep bragging on your cooking, and you keep having pies that ain't done or are all burnt up. Well, actually, uh, we got to be getting back to town. Uh, hey, little Joe, now, here's, uh, here's your money. Uh, give it a horse. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you tell your pa what I said about getting mixed up with racehorses, you hear? Yes, sir. I think he ought to think twice on it. Yes, sir. Thank you for the call. Enos. Ooh. <laughs> Wait a minute, Al. You feed him, and I'll bed him down, then we'll both go in and talk to Paul. Come on. You know, you're you're beginning to act just like another brother of mine. Oh, hell, I mean, ain't that. That burns just a... Well, I sure do hate to face Paul alone, that's all. Why? Oh, hello. What's wrong? Nothing. Well... We bought a horse. <laughs> you, uh, you bought a horse? Yeah, Paul. And he's... He's taller than anything we have here on the ranch. Oh, he sure is. He sure is. You intend to, uh, cut cattle or, uh, or do some roping with this, uh, this giraffe? No, 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 no. Th th this is a racehorse. We, uh, bought him straight from Kentucky. It's a racehorse, yeah. straight from Kentucky. How many times have I told you two that if an animal doesn't carry its own weight here, we don't need it? No, no, you don't understand. You see, we're going to enter him in the race in Virginia City, and when we win the $1,500, then we're going to sell him. But, Paul, he can sure run. Of course, he can sure eat. A regular hay burner, ain't it? Paul, Adam took him out for a... A little run this afternoon, and ain't a horse on this whole place that can even make him breathe hard. Oh, that's for sure. Then run? Yeah, look at his chest. Yeah. Take a look at these legs, too, Paul. Right here. It's deep. Look at those legs, Paul. You ever seen anything like it? Ain't he something? How's the steam power? Oh, he can run all day. Pay for him. Uh, we, well, we, uh, what did we pay? Uh... Paul, would you say $400 was too much money to pay for an animal like that? $400? Cash money. You have a bill of sale? Oh, yeah, sure. Right here. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Something wrong?
You stole the horse. What? Yeah. This horse is worth a thousand dollars. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> huh? Didn't I tell you he's worth every single dollar? As a matter of fact, he's uh, worth fifteen hundred dollars to anyone who wants a racehorse. <laughs> What do you mean by that, Paul? Well, I guess the only way you can earn this board and keep is by entering him in that Virginia City race. That's right. That's right. And that's what we're going to do, Paul. <clears throat> you are? The only, uh, the only thing is we're going to have to borrow $25 for the entrance fee. $25? How'd you boys get that broke? Uh, well, that's that's a long, sad story. Now, the point is, Pa, uh, can you loan us twenty-five? Yeah, and maybe another hundred or so, so we can make a few side bets. How much? Seventy-five. Fifty. Twenty-five for the fee, huh? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll lend you twenty-five for the fee. And fifty dollars a piece for the side bets. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Great. Buddy. Of course, if I'm gonna lend you that kind of money, I'm afraid I'm simply gonna to have to. Ah. We know, Paul. Security. Security. Yeah. Mmm. These are... These are really good cookies, ma'am. Well, thank you. Well, I've been meaning to tell you a little, Joe. You've been doing a fine job. Near as good as me in my younger days. Mm, thank you. But for $15... Enos, I now don't start that again. Uh, well, of course, it, it, it's getting late now. You should get ready for bed. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh. Night, little Joe. Good night, ma'am. Pleasant dreams. Enos... Oh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> we got to put the stock to bed, so you go to bed. Uh, good night, dear. Why don't you shave once in a while? I will, honey. Good night. Oh, I'll be up later. Now, uh... Now, we better get that stock checked. Oh, oh no, no, no. Just, just a minute. Uh, want to ask you something. Uh, that little black horse you were breaking, uh... He as fast as he looks. Mm-hmm. It's about the fastest little animal I ever rode. Uh, how long do you think it would take to get him uh, set for racing? Racing? <laughs> You're not figuring on racing that horse, are you? Well, it, it, it might be if uh, you thought we could get him ready by time. You know, that $1,500 purse is mighty inviting. You figuring on riding him? Well, uh, I couldn't. But I thought maybe you'd like to. Uh, before, naturally, I'd make it worth your while. You win, I'll give you four hundred dollars. Oh, I don't know, no. You know, my brother's having that horse in the race. It just, nah, it just just doesn't seem right for me to ride against him. No, 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 little Joe. You, you just, just don't understand. Now. You can't lose. Well, what a race! Nobody can lose it. Don't you remember? You told me if the third bread wins, you get five hundred of the purse, plus the third interest of the horse. That's right. But if Blackie wins, you get four hundred dollars, and the brothers have to give you the third bread and the rifle. <laughs> hey, you know, Mr. Milford, I, I never thought about it like that. Yeah, well, you you were just looking at one side of it. Yeah. Well, I guess I was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got something I want to show you. you're about to see may be our ace in the hole. An English riding saddle. Yeah, was that all of it? Yeah, I've had this one for a long time. 
All I had left after that racehorse of mine fell down and broke his leg. Feel his weight. Hey. Hey, that thing doesn't hardly weigh anything at all, does it? Yeah, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if a horse could run a mite faster with this on his back instead of one of ours. You know, I bet you're right. I bet you are right. Yeah. I just wonder if the racing committee lets you use it. Oh, I've already checked the rules. It says all horses will be ridden with a saddle. Now, uh, just because this one looks more like a napkin with stirrups on it, <laughs> nobody can say it ain't a proper saddle. It's a saddle, all right. Yeah. Boy, you really checked this thing out, huh? I sure did. There's just one thing. What? Uh, well, I, I, I think that, that for training and, and riding this horse, it's just, well, it's just worth more than $400. Just to be fair, I should get $500. $500, you got yourself a rider. $450. 500 500. You know, little Joe, I'm beginning to think the only way to get ahead of you is walk behind you. Now, just one more little favor. Let's keep this kind of a secret from uh, Cora, I mean, you know. You know how she feels about racing. Don't you worry about it. So, Mr. Milford, there's one thing you and I understand it's women. Mm. Enid! Yes, dear. Hey, hey, the saddle. Uh, oh, the saddle. can run. Going to take a mighty good horse to beat him. I hope you're right. We'll find out day after tomorrow. I've got a feeling your brother's going to do some yelling about this saddle. I've got a feeling they're going to do some yelling about who's sitting in that saddle. Hey, little brother. Glad to see you here. Came to see your horse win, huh? You can start counting your money right now. Well, Mr. Milford, what you got here? A horse. A race horse. <laughs> a race horse. <laughs> You, you ain't planning on running this little puny thing against that big, long-legged thoroughbred of ours, are you? Who's gonna ride him? Well, I was meaning to talk to you about that, Adam, but I've been so busy all week, I... What you're trying not to tell me is that you were going to ride him, right? Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute, Joe. You mean you're going to ride this horse against our race horse? You got a third interest in him yourself. We know that, but that ain't enough. Wait a minute. Come again on that a little bit slower, Mr. Milford. Look, if he wins from me, he gets 500 for riding, plus all your losing horse, plus your rifle at him. But if he loses and you win, he gets 500 from the prize and only a third of your horse. <laughs> It seems to me that our little brother has learned some very interesting ways since he left the home hearth. Yes, sir. He's putting together some real dandy little tricks, ain't he? Yeah, well, you, you, you fellas told me I should get better habits about saving money. Don't you think you're overdoing it, little brother? Well, I wouldn't worry too much. Looks like a pretty small horse. You think he can last the race on a dead run? Just... We'd like you to clean and polish that rifle of yours before you give it to me. Race isn't run yet. Come on, Adam. We gotta get saddled up anyhow. Well, B. What kind of a saddle is little Joe said? It looks like one of those English kind, huh? Too sure English saddles acceptable in this race. 
Now, Clem, if Venus is using one on his horse, you can believe it. He's read the rules pretty close. I don't know, Ben. It's a bit grand, wouldn't you say? Venus, there's some question about that saddle there. Well, now, Clem, according to the rules, it says all mounts will be ridden with a saddle. Now, I reckon out here that this little piece of leather wouldn't be considered much of one. But it's made of leather, got a seat, stirrups, and tied on with a cinch. Now, if that don't make a saddle, I don't know what does. Well, Clem, he's right, you know. If you want to change the rules, you're going to have to wait till next year. Right now, he's got to. <laughs> Let's get on with the race. Some of you have forgotten, here they are. All you riders know the big elm tree about a half mile out of town. Well, you all circle it. Tree on your right. Come back here to the finish. You know, read them good now. Read them, do you? Yeah, come on. Now, don't get too excited, Enos. Remember what happened last time? Now, Sam, you promised not to tell it. He didn't. I saw you sneak off this morning. I just made Sam drive me in. Uh, Enos, they're going to start. At least you can put that poor horse back to work after he loses. Woman, why don't you go burn a pie? On your marks. Get set. Go. Race I ever seen run, Joe. Uh, thank you. Well, this thoroughbred just isn't as thorough as I thought he was. Too bad, Adam, but it was a good race. Little Joe, you really slicker them with that little saddle of yours. I'll, I'll pay you all off. I'll pay you all off much as I hate all right. you. All right. <laughs> Congratulations, little Joe. Come on, let's give our horse a rub down. Come on. All right, partner. Yeah. You take him. Huh? Come on. And uh, I'll take my other horse. Don't remind me. I don't think I like this much. What's the matter? Oh, you too? Here. Enos Milford. Now, Cora. Have you lost your senses? Cora, let me explain. But what do you want him for? He ain't good for anything on the ranch. Oh, just look at him, Cora. Just look at him. As pretty an animal as God ever created. And I just couldn't resist trading Blackie for him. But at least Blackie was good for something besides fool horse racing. Mother, this big horse means a lot to me. Oh, sure, I know he's useless, but uh, I've always wanted a thoroughbred. And even if all he can do is eat and winnie, it's, uh, well, uh, sort of something I've wanted ever since I was a boy. <laughs> Enos... <laughs> Sometimes I'll just never understand men. <laughs> oh, let's take this big hay burner and get home. <laughs> Thanks for the horse. Uh, Enos got himself a mighty fine animal. Well, Mr. Milford wanted that thoroughbred so bad, Pa, I couldn't very well refuse him. Besides, old, old Blackie here is nothing but working stock.
That's a beauty. I, I got a scabbard. Looks like little Joe won all the marbles. Cinch race. You fellas and that animal sure cost me a lot of money. Here you are, horse. Here's what you won. How about a beer, Leaf? I'll, I'll buy you a beer. Come on. Just a minute. What is going on here? <clears throat> Adam, you see, I... Well, I put up my new saddle for security to borrow the money to make that bet with. But we lost. I know you did, Adam, and I'm sorry about that. Now, let me get this straight. You are telling me that you bet against our horse? Adam, old Leif was making such good odds, I just couldn't resist. Tell you what I'll do, Adam. Why don't you take this money and buy your rifle back? I, I won't. No security. How about, uh, how come I don't go down and buy you a beer? Well, I'll buy you a beer, too. You just leave. I'll buy everybody a beer. You want a beer? You want your rifle back? You want the money. How much do you want to bet on this one? You should have for security. <laughs> Sundown. Yeah, I'm glad that chore's over. I don't know. There's worse things than a 15 day cattle drive. What? 16 day cattle drive? You gotta admit, you do get to thinking and feeling sort of like a steer, don't you? Yeah, I'm glad you finally admitted it. Well, here's where I'll leave you fellas. What? Oh, now, don't tell me you're gonna go over and see that Bessie Sue before you even get home. I promised Mr. Hightower I was gonna come by there and take a look at that new bull of his. I just hope you don't get the two of them mixed up. No, he couldn't do that. Bessie Sue's the one with the blue eyes. Just because a gal's a nice arm load. Nice arm full? There aren't six men in the territory with that longer reach. <laughs> well, you tell Paul I'll be home later anyhow here. Right. Good luck. Oh, you know, it's going to be good to get home and get some rest. Yeah, I almost forgot what soft bed and good food are like. Let's go. Teague? He's home. I spotted some smoke coming out of the chimney when we first got here. And where there's smoke, there's an old man and his gold, huh? Huh, Teague? <laughs> Except maybe all them stories about the gold ain't true. Macy says it's there all right. Then what are we waiting for? Let's take him. Macy's not sure he's alone. Macy's too bossy. Besides, we ain't gonna find out sitting up here. And I ain't gonna find out by letting him shoot at me. Go ahead if you want to. Macy wants to talk to somebody. Go ahead. Why me? Because you got feet like a mountain goat. Go on. I ain't going unless you do. All right, you knucklehead. Come on.
What's up, Macy? Look down yonder. Oh, where have you been, Billy boy, Billy boy? Oh, where have you been, charming Billy? You reckon he's coming here? The trail goes right by the cabin. We better decide what to do real quick. No, no sense in asking for trouble. We'll just keep out of sight. But what if he's come to see the old man? We're the only company we intend for that old man to have. Maybe he'll go on by. But what if he don't? I'm against taking chances. We'll kill him. Take him. <laughs> Thanks a lot, mister. I'm much obliged. What for? Now, wait a minute. You don't think I'm, I'm one of them? You ain't got no reason yet to think otherwise. Dad Burnett, they tried to kill me, too. Could have been a trick to get you in here. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I ain't got nothing to do with them fellas. I don't know who they are even. I, I'm from the Ponderosa. My name's Hoss Cartwright. Walter. Fella here says he's a Mr. Cartwright. Well, did you see that? See what? The way Walter took to you. He did? Yes, sir. I never seen anything like the way he took to you. You'll have to excuse Walter for not getting up. Uh, he's had a hard day. Yeah, that's that's all right. Uh, make yourself to home. I bet you could use a drink. Yeah, yeah, I could. But what are we going to do about them fellas out there? Oh, Walter will warn us if you try to start anything. Nothing to worry about, not a thing. You had a clear shot at him and you missed. I didn't see neither one of you hitting him when you had the chance. Wasn't much chance, the way that old man had us pinned down. I thought you said he was a prospector. He is. Sure knows how to handle a gun. Well, ain't don't gonna do no good to sit here and fret about it. This way, we know what we're up against now. Yeah. Two of them. And there's supposed to be three of us. You making me out a coward? Yeah! Two trying to do. He's saying I'm yellow, Macy. And I'm saying you're both loony. This ain't no concern of yours, Macy. Now you listen to me. You two want to kill each other, I ain't about to stop it. All I'm asking is you wait till we lift that gold from the old man. Or maybe you two knuckleheads don't want that gold. I can wait. How'd I know we'll keep his word? Because he's just as greedy as you are. Not often I get to share my whiskey. Walter don't drink. He don't like the taste of whiskey, huh? Oh, he don't mind the taste. It just seems it don't do much for him. It makes him sleepy. Yeah. Look, Mr. Uh, uh, Obie's the name. Obie. 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 Who are them fellas? Oh, I got no earthly notion. Well, what are they after? What do they want? Well, I ain't sure. But my guess is they're figuring on robbing me. 
Well, if they're going to do that, how come they ain't moved in? There's three of them, ain't but one of you. Well, that's what they don't know. The way Walter figured it... Uh... Walter? Oh, no, getting around. That Walter is clever. It no sooner showed up than Walter figured out he's up to no good, so we'd best lay low. That's pretty good figuring. Walter figured it wouldn't jump. It's before dark. But now they know there's only two of us, uh, my guess is they ain't gonna wait. Dad, burn it. Bessie Sue ain't gonna never believe this. We ought to be back. <laughs> How'd things go? Any sign of herd cutters? Yeah, we had one gang follow us for a little while. We discouraged them. Oh, good. Well, what about the buy from St. Louis? He was there, ready to pay the price. Well, things yeah. couldn't have gone better. Good, good. Where's Hoss? He won't be long for a little time yet. He decided to stop over at the Hightower place. Oh, good. I'm glad he did. I've been meaning to drop over myself and see that new bull. If he's anything half as valuable as Jim Hightower says he is, there ought to be something to see. Yeah, well, I don't think the bull was the reason. I think Hoss is just trying to get a little better look at that Bessie Sue. Hmm? What about it? He's sweet on her. Oh. Well, seriously? Yeah. Turns red every time we mention her. Of course, that doesn't mean much with Hoss. He turns red every time we mention any girl. <laughs> well, that's his problem. All I want is some food and a nice soft bed. Yeah, wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, we got a lot of things to do, and that's why I'm very glad to see you back. There's that fence to be fixed in the north pasture. Still a lot of hay to be hauled, and I want to get started on that new well right away. What was it you said about getting back for a rest? Wishful thinking. Oh, not at all. Why? Supper will be ready in a couple of minutes, then you won't have a thing to do till sun up. Oh. <laughs> now that was a bonehead move. Obi, we gotta do something. Walter used to make the same mistake. Walter played checkers? Oh, not very good. I could beat him a lot more than I do, but I don't want to hurt his feelings. Look, Obi, we can't just sit here. Uh, go ahead, it's your move. You're sure not much of a player, boy. Well, Dad Bernard, what do you expect with them Jaspers up there in the hills just waiting to pounce down here on us? We might as well be here playing checkers. It's two and over. Besides, I told you Walter had warned us. just don't seem to have as much confidence in Walter as you do. Oh, why on the earth not? Well, you don't seem very alert to me. Well, that's because Walter's deep. Real deep. Hey, uh, maybe, maybe it'd be all right if just one of us stood there at the window, huh? Well, and hurt Walter's feelings? How do you know he'd mind? Well, you've got to understand Walter to appreciate how sensitive he is. I hope he appreciates how sensitive I am to bullets. Your move. You ready? Yeah. Let's go get him. Act mighty bound and determined. Yeah, well, they ain't no more bound and determined than I am, I'll guarantee you. And they're mighty sly, too. Staying behind them rocks. Can't get a good shot at them. Sure wish I could figure out what they're after. It ain't ammunition, they got plenty of that. Couldn't be grub, them hills is full of game. Hobie, you ain't feuding with nobody, are you? I mean, Walter ain't well enough acquainted with nobody to feud. How about horses? You got any horses? Nope. You run any cattle? Nope. That gun, it beats all. Yeah, my 
must be about supper time. I sure am getting hungry. I've been trying not to think about it. If there's one thing I'm against, it's being hungry. Me and Walter feel mighty strong on that. You and Walter and me. But what about them? Uh, let them get their own grub. Carrying on, shooting. What are you figuring on doing, holding out a white flag while we eat supper? It's time to use my surprise. What do you plan? I'm going to make sure I don't go to glory on the empty stomach. You stay here and shoot steady for a minute. nation was that? Dynamite. Lucky I cooked this morning. Sure I'm hungry. Dig in, boy. Boy, oh boy. Mm -hmm. He showed her look good. What's the matter, boy? Mind too much spice in the beans? Here. Take some bread. <laughs> Had me worried there for a minute. You all right now? That choking made me think maybe I put a speck too much seasoning in the beans. Just like we always fix them. Sure good, ain't it? Or like some flavorsome. Be careful, that coffee it may be hot. If you had a hard day, boy, don't you worry, you'll get your appetite back. You got to eat, boy. Need your strength. Everybody to get better, don't you? I went through the whole Mexican War and I, I never got hurt like this. When I get through with them two fellas, they're going to wish they'd kill me outright. My head feels like one of them rocks with a bad crack in it. Hurry up with the grub. Well, you'll wait or you'll eat it raw. Don't you two ever stop jawing at each other? Well, what does he expect me to do, magic? It don't take magic to rustle up a little grub. How'd you like a little poison in yours? Believe me, in your cooking, it wouldn't taste no different. Oh, quit low rating him. Oh, let him... I said shut up! Ah, I reckon it's done. I think that we might as well forget this job. We could have robbed the biggest bank in the West with a whole lot less trouble. Yeah. But I don't like quitting on it. I don't need them. I sure ain't either for any more surprises like that rock shower we had. Hey. You don't suppose he's got any more of that dynamite buried around here, do you? Hmm. I don't know. And right now, I don't feel too anxious to find out. Ain't that the truth? Old Coop, that loony ain't likely to have much gold anyways. We're not only gonna get that gold, we're gonna pay him back for these bruises they gave us. I'll take the first watch. <clears throat> See if they don't slip out in the dark.
you do that for? Cover up them windows so we can have some light. Play a little checkers. Oh, baby, we can't play checkers. We gotta keep guard every minute. You're forgetting the water. Let me ask you something. A lot of people use this trail by here. Oh, it's pretty well traveled. Yeah? When was the last time somebody came by? Well, it's real recent, not more than two or three months ago. Uh, you want the red or the black? I gotta figure out some way to get out of here alive. Shh, shh. What's the matter? You'll upset water. How am I gonna upset water? Talking about getting killed. We talked about it all afternoon. I know, but Walter figured you're joking. You keep on talking about it, and he'll think you're serious. I am serious. What's all the big secret? What does Walter think all that shooting was about, anyhow? Well, he figures we're about to get robbed. Well, they gotta kill us to rob us, ain't they? Shh. What's the matter now? I told you, talking about killing upsets Walter. Well, he can't hear me. I know, but he reads lips. I don't see no sense in waiting around here all morning. You heard what Macy said. So it'd be a lot easier to sneak up in that cabin at night. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna go down there and take a little closer look. I don't trust you. I'll go with you. the makings of a real player, boy. Just got to pay closer attention. How am I supposed to pay attention when I'm worried sick? I never saw a young boy fret so. You stay around Walter more and you'll have faith. Walter's got a little plan. when he wanted to build that. Now, why didn't you watch where you were going? You pushed me. I never did. I didn't touch you. What was that for? That was for that gal in Wichita. When I bought all the drinks and you danced with her. That was five years ago. I don't care. I still don't like it. She was no good anyway. I still don't like it. Five years. Five years. Five years. Five years. How many times I gotta tell you lunkheads this robbery is serious business? Yeah. That burn it. Wonder what they're so all fired anxious to get. Gold. Gold? Men orders, prospectors. You ain't never struck no pay dirt, have you? We struck a nice little vein a while back. You keep it in this cabin? Well, that's a fool question. Now, where else would I keep it? Where's it at? Well, right here's a little poke here. It's dead in the table leg. Walter likes to rest his head on some. 
Some up there on the shelf, a few more there in the wood box. Obi, how much of the stuff you got? Well, now, me and Walter ain't reckoning it up lately, but I'd say offhand about twenty-five or 30000 Oh, no. Whatever's the matter? Obi, don't you understand? Them fellas are going to stay out there till they get their hands on this gold, no matter what. Well, maybe they will. But sometimes plans don't always work out. Well, that's fine, but what are we going to do? I'll tell you. You take the red for a while, and I'll take the black. trap. Had some old bear traps that was going to throw away and water wouldn't let me. So planted about five of them under the cabin just in case some smarty bitches got the idea to burn us out. <laughs> figure out how to get that gold himself. His horse and things are still here. Of course. Macy's smart. He thinks that's going to stop us from following him. Oh, he does, does he? Well, he ain't going to get away with it. Let's go. Go ahead, you first. No. You first. No, I ain't going to argue with you. And I ain't going to have you following me in the dark with a rifle pointing at my back. Well, you... <laughs> <laughs> You 
two bird brains alone for a minute. Get this bear trap off of me. Mason, we thought you were off on us. Yeah, we figured you were sticking the old man's goal for yourself. So you gotta get sore at me at the side of fight yourself. No, it's just that Willard here didn't have the brains enough oh. to understand something. I ain't got no brains. It's you that's putting oh, the smart chicken. Get it out, will ya? Jeez, Mason, how'd you get tangled up in this thing? Figured I'd start a fire and smoke him out. With a bear trap? Oh. Jesus. Hey, you help him with that, Willard. I tell you, one of them fellas down there, either that big one or the old man, got an evil mind. I swear, I don't care about that gold anymore. I'm going to kill him. So help me, I'm going to kill him. A mind like that shouldn't be allowed to live. Easy, easy, easy. Yeah, the evil horse didn't come home last night. Yeah, I looked in his room. Well, Bar's gonna have his high when he finds out he didn't spend the night in the house. Well, maybe if we don't tell him, he won't find out. Yeah, we better get over to Hightower's place and get him back here quick. Must be some bull, huh? I think we better take a closer look at Bessie Sue. You take a closer look. I can tell she's a girl from way over here just by the way she wears her clothes. Oh, very good. Well, good morning, gentlemen. How is everybody this morning? Fine, Bar. Good. Say, do you know Horst didn't sleep here last night? Well, how, how do you know that? Well, I, uh, I walked into his room, and the bed hadn't been slept in. Well, that must be it, then. Yeah. Yeah, we were thinking about riding over to the high towers and check on him. Good. Now, I know he has a good reason for not coming in last night, but still, mightn't do any harm to check. I'm riding into town. Why don't you meet me there after you do? Oh, and uh, give my very best regards to Jim and to uh, Bessie Sue. <laughs> You know, he wasn't even mad at us. I think he has more faith in him than we do. Man, what do you mean? Well, how would you like to have Bessie Sue as a sister-in-law? <laughs> Come on, will you? Us wouldn't do that to us. <laughs> would he? He would. What do you think you're doing? I was just gonna shoot him in the eye. Yeah? Which one? The left one. I don't know which is more dangerous. You or them fellas in the car. Why don't you shut up? Let's see what these fellas are gonna do. Sleeping real sound. How long's it been daylight? Oh, quite a spell. Obi, you should have woke me up. Well, you plum tuckered out. Yeah, but it ain't fair for you to have to do all the watching. Me and Walter's proud to do it. In fact, Walter's got a high opinion of the way you've been handling this ruckus. And I got to say that I agree with you. Anything new? Well, Walter woke up with a little headache. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Walter woke up with a headache? Well, he feels fine now. Walter's got a wonderful constitution. Of course, he's always taking real good care of himself. Yeah, well, that, that always helps. Hey, Obi. Obi. You reckon them polecats are still out there? Well, more than likely. Dad, Bernie, I wish I could figure out some way to get us out of here without going right by him. Hey, Obi. What happened if we busted out some of these boards and went out the back way? Wouldn't do any good right up against the mountain. That's why me and Walter built it like that, so nobody could sneak up behind us. Hey, what about a tunnel? What if we dug a tunnel? Uh, ground's like rock. Come to think of it, it's pretty near all rock. Dad, Brad, Obi, we gotta do something. Well, I don't know what it might be. But there's no use to worry now. You can see Walter ain't worrying. He's playing. He's playing? 
What's he playing? Dead? No, he hardly ever plays dead and unless he's real tired. He's playing, he's paralyzed. Oh. How about some breakfast? Yeah, I'm starving to death. I think you would be after that little dab of supper last night. Sit down. Beans? Yeah, and plenty of them. I generally cook up a batch to last a week. But there's just us, by golly, we can have uh, some good eating three or four days. Obi, is beans all you ever eat? Well, we have a little fish and game now and then. But me and Walter figure as long as we don't have to answer to nobody for what we eat, we might as well have what we like. Yeah, I can't argue that. I declare, boy, as finicky as you are about eating, I don't see how you ever got to be your size. Now, what'd you do that for? We don't need a fire. Well, you know some other way to get our coffee? We ain't gonna have no hot coffee, so forget it for a while. I got an idea. I'm listening. All right. We ain't had any luck getting anyways near close to that cabin, have we? Not so far. Well, we ain't likely to as long as we keep putting up an open fight. Somebody down there seems to know where we are before we get there. Ain't that the truth? We're gonna try a new tack. We're gonna give up. Give up? Give up? Well, leastwise, that's what we're gonna make them think. I don't know, Macy. Why don't we just rush them and get it over with? Depends on what you want to get over, Tig. I don't know anybody yet that's had any luck rushing a bullet. Maybe Tig here figures he's the one to do it. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Half share instead of a third. There wouldn't be nobody would have to force it on me. What's your plan? Well, I figure we don't do nothing. We stay right here as long as we don't light any fires or make any noise. And then what? Well, sooner or later, they're bound to step out of that cabin, and when they do... <laughs> yeah. It'll be as easy as picking off buffalo. Huh? Okay, Macy. On one condition. What? You and me do the shooting. All right. Boy, you're getting better every time. God burn it. See anything? Not a thing. I can't figure it, Obi. I never figured them to give up. And I ain't seen a fire or nothing out there all morning. Well, they ain't giving up. Well, how come they ain't shot at us? Well, like I said, Walter figured. Ain't you ever known Walter to be wrong? Well, not that I recollect offhand. If he's so dang good at figuring, how come he ain't figured out some way to get us out of here? Well, Walter don't claim to know everything. Wouldn't be in this jam in the first place if you and Walter to... If you'd put that money in the bank where it belongs. Well, you could be right about that. It's your move. Obi, how can you just sit there doing nothing? Doing nothing? I'm doing two things. I'm keeping my mind on this game and keeping it off of everything else. The least we can do is get ready for the attack when it does come. Let's get the rest of the ammunition out. What ammunition? The rest of the ammunition. Let's get it all out. It is all out. All out? You mean there ain't no more? Well, we didn't figure we needed any more. Me and Walter don't hold to violence. No, sir. There's a lot to be said against it. It's your move, son. Uh, Bessie Soup. Oh. Oh, howdy, boys. It's good to see you. Uh, howdy, Bessie. Boy, that, that looks like a pretty heavy timber. On oh, this little bitty thing? You can toss him around all day long. They told us up at the house uh, we'd find you here. Do you know where Hoss is? That's what I'd like to know. Wasn't it your place last night? Well, I ain't seen hide nor hair of him, and we were supposed to make plans for the dance Saturday night. I got a good mind to go with somebody else. 
Serve him right. I, I'm taking Jenny. Uh, Mary Ann. I understand, boys. That's the trouble with being so popular. The timid ones never speak up for fear you're already spoke for. Yes, that's true. Did you say Host was coming to see me last night? Well, we, we don't know. Was it either you or the bull? The what? Uh, what he means to say is that Host is the shy one. You don't suppose that big moose could be double dealing me with that little old Cindy Larson in town? No. Oh, not, not that little old thing. Oh, of course not. But we got to keep looking for him, so we'll see you later. You tell Hoss when you see him that I'm expecting him to take me to the dance. And if he don't show up on time, I'm going to skin him with a dull knife. Yes, ma'am. We'll tell him. Well, see you at the dance. Oh, she's right about Cindy Larson. Yeah, Cindy ain't half the girl Bessie Sue is. Now, what girl is? Listen, we got to stop in town to see Pa anyway. Why don't we check by Cindy and ask if she's seen him? If she has, and Bessie Sue finds out about it, Hoss ain't gonna be in shape to dance for a month. How about a drink? No, thanks. Might pass the time a little. Uh, don't make it help much. Can't hurt. Opposed to whiskey in the morning? No, it ain't that. Does your wife object to drinking? I ain't got a wife. You ain't feeling up to snuff, are you? I feel fine. You go ahead and have one if you want it. Oh, I don't take any pleasure drinking alone. All right, I'll have one with you then. Mm. Of course, there's ways to fool a wife. I knew a fellow once. He's a regular devil. Drank hard liquor every day. He's always careful to chew on a clove. His wife thought he just had a fondness for cloves. Well, here's luck. Uh, me and Walter will go along with that. It's your move. Surprise, a nice boy like you ain't got a wife. You ain't got a wife. I know. Don't need one. I got Walter. Yeah, he's a real lively companion, he is. Ain't he, though? That gummit, OB, I can't stand another minute of this. Why, whatever's the matter, boy? I can't just sit here and wait for them fellas to come down here and pounce on us whenever they get ready. I gotta do something. Well, you think of something, we'll both do it. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna bust out of this back wall. That's what we're gonna do. Well, I told you, you can't go anywhere, smack up against a mountain like that. Yeah, but if we can make them think there's a place to go and they think we've gone, then they gotta come in here to find out which way we went, ain't they? Well, it sounds likely. Only we're gonna be waiting right here for them. Get over behind that door. Come on. What are you doing? Them fellas been so anxious to get close to this goal, I mean to oblige them. All right, we're pulling out. You're welcome to the place. What do you reckon that meant? You reckon it'll work? Already it did. How can you tell? I don't hear nothing. Look at Walter. He ain't been this excited since he was a puppy. I'll be dead bird. He's opening his eyes. Ain't that something? Yeah. The door's wide open. They're gone. Gone? Where could they go? This is mining country. That shack could have been built over an old tunnel. Yeah, it could also be some kind of a trap again. Don't you forget, one of them fellas in there's got a real evil mind. What if he has? I'm getting tired of sitting around here. What are we gonna do? Yeah, 
What are we going to do? All right. It's against my better judgment, but let's go take a chance. <laughs> Ginger, ain't had so much fun in 30 years. Looks like Walter enjoyed it, too. Yeah, get him. Nerves of steel, ain't he? So I want to press charges against these fellows, Sheriff. What kind of charges? Robbery. Robbery? What'd they steal? They stole Obie's gold, that's what. What gold? Yeah. What gold? Haas, they don't seem to have any gold. Yeah, well, well maybe they didn't steal it, but, but they jumped us and tried to kill us. They did? They sure did. They, they gave old Obie and Walter and me a real bad time. They did? Oh, Sheriff, you got eyes. Now, I ask you. Who do you figure tried to kill who? Oh, Sheriff. Sheriff, you... You got to make him a good player, boy. You just gotta pay closer attention, that's all. Boss? Oh, hi, Paul. Well, Sheriff told us to find you in here. He says he's holding you and some strangers till he gets to the bottom of this. Son, the bottom of what? Well, it's, it's a long story, Paul. Ain't nothing to worry about, though. <laughs> now, well, you better start worrying. You're gonna be a lot of trouble if you're not out in time to take Bessie Sue to that dance Saturday night. Yeah, she said something about skinning you with a dull knife. Ain't nothing to fret about, Hoss. Oh, it ain't? That's right. Obie's right. Old Walter will think of something. 